What's happening YouTube? Welcome back to James V Outdoors. Today I'm going to be giving you a review of the iPilot troll motor that I put in my boat a little while back. And also I'm going to try something new. I'm going to be launching this boat um, using the troll motor alone. I'm not going to have anybody in the boat or any ropes tied on. So I'm either going to get a video of the troll motor bringing the boat right back to the dock or I'm going to have a video of me swimming out there to get the boat as it floats away. Either way I'm going to post a video so stay tuned. Okay, so fortunately that was a success. I did not have to go swimming to get the boat. Um, to be honest, I was a little concerned that that might be the case. But anyway, I'm out here right now um, sitting with my trolling motor. This is the Minn Kota Riptide. It's an 80 pound thrust trolling motor. I got it installed at a shop here in Virginia. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the trolling motor and if you're on the fence about buying one or you're not sure if it could benefit you, you know, then hopefully some of this will help. Um, I've had the trolling motor on the boat for about nine months now. Um, I really, really like the trolling motor. I'll start by that. You know, I'm going to say a couple cons with it here in just a minute, but don't take that as you should not get this trolling motor or not get an iPilot in general, because what they do is really awesome stuff. So right now I'm sitting on anchor mode. Um, as you can tell, the wind has kind of picked up a little bit here right into my face. Um, if you look at the shore and the surroundings here, this trolling motor is hardly moving at all. Right now, I'm basically sitting dead still. It might help if you look over here where these houses are that you can see the bank. See, it's on anchor mode. Um, what that trolling motor is doing is it's got the GPS in the head of the trolling motor. And as the wind and tide move, this trolling motor is adjusting its speed and direction to help keep you in place. So that's pretty awesome. Um, one of the cons that I found with this is that this anchor in place feature does not work as well on days that are very calm or if you're in a spot that does not have a lot of tide. <clears throat> so if you're sitting somewhere efficient and there's no wind and no tide, this trolling motor seems to have a little bit of a more difficult time staying in one spot. It'll be a little bit left and a little bit right and a little bit left again. I've tried to use it before, let's say like fishing slip bobber rigs for speckled trout in the winter time. Um, as that troll motor swinging left and right and trying to keep its place, oh, got some sirens from the courthouse over there. So as that troll motor is swinging left and right trying to keep its place, it does have a tendency to uh, eat up fishing lines, I'll say. Um, I've done this about three times where my lines have too much slack in them if I'm fishing multiple bobber rigs and the trolling motor decides that it wants to eat them up. So you got to be cautious of that. Again, if there's wind or tide, no problem there. Another neat feature that I like about this trolling motor is that you can change speeds directly from the remote. Um, so what I like to do is use a cruise control feature that's on the remote and basically you set a speed and that trolling motor will keep you at that exact speed as you're going. So if I'm taking somebody out fishing and our goal is just to catch a bunch of fish, um, you know, I'll turn that trolling motor on a consistent speed. For example, let's say like speckled trout fishing, put a couple rods out of the back of the boat, start trolling for these trout and this trolling motor keeps you at a consistent speed. That's awesome for it. Um, if you had a picture, and maybe I'll include a picture of what my old trolling motor rig was that was made up with some 2x4s, it was a little bit redneck. But this is the uh, new high-tech version here, and for trolling, awesome, you can't beat it.
I was on the fence about what size trolling motor that I wanted to get. So I reached out to this trolling motor shop in Suffolk, Virginia, where I had this installed and kind of told them my needs and what I was looking for. I've got a 15 foot Boston whaler, so it's not a big boat, um, but it's fairly heavy. And he asked what type of fishing I did. And I told him I like to fish in the rivers and the bay and you'll run into some stronger tides there. So he steered me toward the 80 pound thrust. Um, you know, there's no way around it with the 80 pound thrust trolling motor, you're gonna be working off 24 volts or two batteries. So you're gonna have the additional weight when you do um, an, a bigger trolling motor and they even make them up to a 36 volt system like 112 pound thrust if you wanted to put it on a bigger boat but as far as the power goes 80 pound thrust has been perfect for me i really haven't run into a tide or a wind that was strong enough that i could not move the trolling motor against it so it's 80 pound thrust has worked out really well i also had a smart a uh, smart battery charger i can't even talk a smart battery charger installed when i had this trolling motor put on basically what it does is it turns on every 15 minutes it checks the battery levels to make sure they're at 100 percent if they're dropping below 100 percent then this thing will turn on a trickle charge on the specific battery that's below 100 percent so you just leave it plugged in and you don't have to worry about it um, back in the day my old rig also i used to have two batteries that i put in and out of the boat and when you're carrying two batteries in and out of the boat and trying to charge them and do all that it's just it's just too much so the way that these trolling motors are controlled is by a handheld remote uh, it makes it really easy to change what function that you want to do hopefully you guys can see this here but everything on this trolling motor is controlled by this remote here so you can be sitting elsewhere in the boat and go and just press buttons on this trolling motor and it works uh, makes it really really convenient a neat feature that I got with my trolling motor is the self-deploy and self-stow. You don't necessarily need this. Um, you know, it helps, number one, if you're fishing by yourself, or number two, if you have a physical limitation that doesn't allow you to lift the trolling motor up and down. Um, it's pretty neat. All you have to do is press one button on your remote, and this thing will stow itself. So here you go. Same way with deploying, press a button, trolling motor folds itself up. And lowers itself right down. It's pretty awesome. It's a, it's a really nice feature. Um, you know, obviously it's gonna add to what you're paying for it, but again, you can't underestimate how handy this makes it when you're fishing alone. Another really nice thing about this trolling motor is that it eliminates the need for you to keep your gas engine running on your boat. For me, I've got an old smoky two-stroke Mercury engine still. It's the original engine from this Boston Whaler, and it's pretty reliable. It's never really left me anywhere, but the thing about it is it is so noisy. If you're at the dock and you've got a 200 horsepower four-stroke running beside uh, you know, my 60 horsepower Mercury, you'll never hear that 200 horsepower running. So for me, this trolling motor also brings a level of quiet uh, it's just more peaceful when you fish and then also too in terms of the fish you're a lot more stealthy when you're coming up on a fish with the trolling motor versus a gas engine so that's going to you know offer you a new dynamic and especially help if you're fishing for a fish species that is hesitant when they hear noise which a lot of them are so that's my honest review of the trolling motor if you're on the fence go ahead and get it trust me this will improve the way that you fish. It'll change the way that you fish. And if you ever were to get this trolling motor and then for some reason not have it in the future, you're gonna think to yourself, wow, I can't fish like this because it really changes the way that you do things. So again, it's a very good review for me on the Minn Kota Riptide 80 pound thrust. If you're on the fence, go ahead and get it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.